Magic Cactuses is brought to you by Building Initiative Incorporated. In partnership with Climate Reality Project. The kids need to follow the organization. This game of time and zero waste. participants and our dear viewers in our Facebook Live. During the whole program, we are encouraging everyone to kindly turn on their cameras and mute their audio so we can still feel each other's warmth and bond online. Kahit na malayo tayo, kahit nasa virtual setting tayo, kapag nag-open camera kayo, mararamdaman natin ang bawat isa. And to have a systematic flow of the program, Here's our house rules and Q&A instructions. First, please use the Zoom background we have sent in your, in your respective emails. Second, please rename yourselves by following this format. Name, dash, organization, or if you don't have an affiliation, name, dash, your place. Third, kindly mute yourselves and listen when someone is speaking. And lastly, Kindly raise a hand if you want to share something or ask any questions. We'd like to inform everyone as well that this session will be recorded and live on Facebook. Good afternoon again, youth leaders! We are from the ULID Initiative, Luzon Chapters Environmental Unit. My name is Andre wilson Bredo, Provincial Director for Catanduanes. I will accompany you to this webinar entitled environmental conservation through sustainable living, lessening the use of single-use plastics. The Project Genesis is organized by the Luzon Committee on Environmental Protection of ULID Initiative Incorporated. The mission of this project is to reduce the use of single-use plastics and to reduce water consumption through using tumbler bottles. Hence, we launched a 15-day Bring Your Own Tumblr campaign. And to educate the youth and the community to be more responsible in caring for our environment. Moreover, to remind us to stay healthy and hydrated amidst the pandemic. Sabi nga ni Mimi, yeah! <clears throat> Drink your water. And so, before we begin our webinar, we would like to invite our Luzon Committee on Environmental Protection Unit Head, Director Rafael Angelo Mahinay to give us to give us some opening remarks. Let us give him a round of a virtual applause. Good afternoon everyone. We would like to welcome our beloved speakers 
and participants who attend this webinar, which we discuss environmental conservation through sustainable living and how we respond to conserve environment in the midst of pandemic and infectious disease. We hope that you will gain some meaningful insights which you can apply on daily lives. In relation to this and for what is next on Community Pantry, we encourage you all to start and create a home garden or community garden also for which we can have a sustainable food security to everyone. Again, welcome environmental stewards. Now, to kick it off, are you excited to know who our guest speaker are? Well, that's good because we are in the same boat as yours. So, for our first guest speaker, she's an environmental lawyer, a public policy specialist, and a law professor. She is currently a partner in YDL Law, YDL Law where she handles the firm's portfolio and renew renew renewable energy projects, environmental compliance, ESC, ESG, investing, C CSR advising, public policy engagement, and advocacy work. Here's our first guest speaker. She's none other than Attorney Alexandra Justine Gamboa. And for our second guest speaker, he is one of the Philippines' 2018 Outstanding Young Men and Women. He currently leads the Living Laudato Laudato Sea Philippines, a movement focused on ethical, environmentally sustainable investments and practices of Catholic institutions and individuals. He is also the chairperson and president of Bayay Sibuyanon Incorporated, a local organization in Romblon Province. Romblon province working on cultural cultural heritage and ecology as well as well as the vice chairperson of Greenpeace Philippines is our beloved Mr. Rodney Galicia please give him Sir Rodney do you think the concept of, in, of the environmentalism is applicable to everyone and why again po Sir Rodney do you think the concept of the concept of environmentalism is applicable to everyone and to why? Wow! Napaka-general yung question niya. Pero ito lang, uh, yung concept kasi na yan, it's not only a concept, but it's a practice. It's action. Uh, whenever people will say, ah, you're an environmentalist, I would say, no, I'm not an environmentalist. Because if say, you're an environmentalist, you advocate for uh, the other you know, element or that that and, and and I'm separate from that you know pag sinabi ko sa idol ah siya uh, na idol mo pinipraise mo uh, like pag sinabi mo kong uh, cellphoneist <laughs> so yung cellphone pero alam nyo the first step there is that you know what we are not environmentalists because we are part of the environment we are part of nature. Uh, shall we say environment may be uh, sa isa sa pag definition niya, yung surroundings no pero sa context natin environment is actually part of us and uh, not only part because ang bu ang, ang buong ang buong pagkatao natin ang buong katawan natin lahat ng mga elemento niyan ay nagaling sa nature you're made of uh, you're made out of stardust you're made out of comets part of it comet part of it is that part of it down part of it nickel part of it iron etc etc i think the first step to accept that not really a concept but a reality is that if you take care of the environment we think of taking of ourselves as well because we are part of it because all elements of the environment nasa iyo for attorney alex gamboa naman here's the second question what do you think is the impact of this pandemic in managing our waste, especially the disposal of used face masks and face shields? And how should we dispose this properly? Again po, what do you think is the impact of this pandemic in managing our waste, of our wastes, especially the disposal of used, ma used face masks and face shields, and how should we dispose them properly? 
Okay. So, we all already know, no, na dumami talaga yung use natin of um, plastic during this pandemic. Um, a lot of it is because of hygienic purposes, no? Um, COVID is really um, a an issue also of um, hygiene, ensuring na your hands are always clean pa hindi mo siya makuha. So, it's the same um, when we use plastic. Kasi when you take out na, ang dami rin na nung nag-take out na ng food. So, usually nasa plastic plastic yun kasi wala naman tayong choice especially nung nagka-lockdown um, kailangan natin um, gamitan ng plastic yun now is it necessarily bad in terms of hygienic and medical purposes like yung mga face masks natin and safety din yun no as well as yung paggamit natin ng alcohol which is usually in a plastic bottle necessary po kasi siya um, we've always said naman pa uh, single use anti single use plastic advocates na kung necessary usage yan uh, hayaan natin yan and yung covid-19 pandemic marami tayong necessary uses of plastic especially that of masks although in terms of um, alcohol being in plastic bottles sana pwede siyang refillable that's another way to curb it however nakaka ano talaga it's really increased our use of um, single use plastic so what we need to do now is of course ensure that that um, plastic is disposed properly because it is one thing to use it it is another thing to dispose of it properly so you can you are enable to uh, you enable the re- recycling process of those types of plastic so we must ensure that if our plastic if our single use plastic is reusable for example mga um, plastic bottles we have to uh, ensure that we keep these bottles clean because pag dirty plastic yan hindi na yan recyclable so we must always be very careful na if gagamit na tayo ng single use plastic kasi kailangan natin siyang gamitin dispose of it properly also second at nakikita natin to parate pag sumot pag nakasuot kayo ng mask pag sinuot niyo yung mask niyo ang dami kong nakikita naglilitoy ng masks at the side of the road or kung saan man siya please do not litter not only because it makes your surroundings dirty but because once nagiging um, dirty na yung mga single use plastic uh, not necessarily mask but for example tapon mo yung plastic bottle mo dyan magiging dirty na rin yan mahirap na yan i-recycle especially since yung taong pupulot niyan for example a garbage collector hindi naman yan more often than not lilinisin para ma-include siya sa recycling bin so um, we just have to ensure always check that your use of necessary single-use plastic at the time of the pandemic for your safety, ask yourself kung recyclable ba yan. Kung recyclable yan, ensure that you follow the um, protocols or the standards to allow that piece of single-use plastic to be recyclable. How's the plastic usage been since the pandemic started? Kung pa- um, kung ano na po yung mas dumami ba yung pag ano to yung mga wastes nung nag-start ba yung pandemic or nabawasan ba kasi hindi na lumalabas yung ano to yung mga tao ako Andre at sa mga nakikinig siguro hindi na lingit sa ating kaalaman na milyong milyong mga tao at milyong milyong mga kaibigan natin at mga kababayan ay naka-receive ng relief goods at almost 99.9% ng mga relief goods na yon ay nakabalot sa plastic. At yung mga nakabalot sa plastic na yon na nakalagay ay mga noodles ay nasa plastic. Yung mga toyo ay nasa plastic. Yung mga mineral waters ay nasa plastic. Yung nalalagyan ng, ng bigas ay nasa plastic. At noong tayo ay hindi na makalabas dahil gusto natin bumili, ang lahat ng mga Shopee at mga Lazada at lahat ng mga online na ating mga order kabalot sa plastic nakabalot at nakabalot pa doon sa mga ginaganyan-ganyan natin kung boring tayo pinapuputok na lang tawag doon bubble 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 wrap bubble wrap at pagkatapos yung nakabalot pa rin yung nakabalot sa bubble wrap na yung nakabalot pa rin sa plastic kaya kung tatanong mo ko magpasa hanggang ngayon kahit yun sa mga community pantries natin sana naman yung mga i-donate natin hindi nakabalo sa plastic if you ask me, dumagdag opo, mas lalong dumagdag at wala pa tayong datos ngayon dahil yun nga, hindi naman tayo makalabas saan nag-i-end up uh, saan nag-i-end yung mga plastics na yun sa bahay ba natin? 
sa kumukolekta, hindi natin alam. But at the end of the day, we know kung saan ito lang. Yan. Like talagang mas dumami po kasi yung iba po is parang uh, na-addict na sila sa pag-online shopping. Tapos kahit na ano to, um, pagkatapos nila buksan yung mga packages nila from Lazada or shop is tinatapon nilang nila agad yung plastic na parang wala nang pakinabang or walang masasaktan. Um, so, my question po is uh, at this time of pandemic, may I kindly ask po if there are new policies that adheres to strict and proper disposal of face masks and face shields given that they are being scattered everywhere. Thank you, Tony. Hi, Jomar. Thank you for that question. Well, according to the infectious disease law, um, not because of environmental reasons, but because of nakakahawa nga, no, pag, uh, uh, pag nakakatouch ka ng mga materials na yun, may human contact, hindi ka sure kung uh, dahil nagka-COVID yung taong na mawak nun. So, under the Infectious Diseases Act, you're supposed, there are guidelines to properly dispose face masks and face shields, especially in hospitals. And that is why also when you're in hospitals, you um, recognize na may isang waste basket sila na specifically for mga used na protective equipment. So, that's the law that, or that's the new, not it's not a new policy. But we're using that law obviously more now because nagka pandemic. So that's the that's where you will find the guidelines on how we dispose this face masks and face shields. But um, again, that law has a health lens, wala pang um, environmental lens. However, appropriately or um, effectively covered naman na yung um, disposal of the face mask and the face shield in our solid waste management app. Obviously, that is waste that is solid, yung face mask and face shield. So, covered na yun sa solid waste management app where it says that you're supposed to, one, segregate your waste properly on a household personal level. So, you must segregate your, you must dispose your face mask and face shield, one, safely because it might be a cause for infection disease as under the infectious diseases law and another is that you are supposed to um, dispose it by segregating it so that pag kinolekta yan ng garbage collectors no, and eventually pupunta sa LGU for proper waste segregation naka uh, easier na for the LGU to know that uh, this uh, bag of yours is segregated according to this class so those are the two laws that you can look at Sir Rodney what do you think are the best practices for, segre- for segregating garbage that could apply in community? Again po, um, what do you think are the best practices for segregating garbage that could apply in community? The New Republic Act 9003 Ecological Solid Waste Management Act uh, na yan. May mga classifications tayo. But let, let, let's think about uh, uh, going back really to doon sa ano doon sa, uh, sa dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon tayo naman ganito I think it's, it's the way we think it's the way we think Filipinos wala naman basura sa atin eh walang waste naman sa atin eh uh, siguro yung patapon no? Pat- parang ex patapon uh, pero <laughs> pero well, ang konsepto ng basura parang wala sa atin uh, remember remember may straw tayo pero hindi straw na pang sip sip ng ng, ng ng drinks no meron tayong sumpit no pang sa warrior pero kawayan yon or whatever pero pwede natin gawing kawayan pwede natin i-adapt uh, sa atin halimbawa kung kayo ay uminom uminom ng tubig hindi naman kayo nagsustraw pag kayo uminom ng juice sa, ba- sa, ng juice sa bahay hindi naman kayo nagsustraw eh, bakit kayo gagamit ng straw eh hindi naman kayo mag tingnan nyo yung mga commercial lang soft drinks yung mga soda although dapat mawag yung soda no Hindi wala lamang straw sila doon sa mga commercials nila ah. Hindi naman nilalagay sa plastic yung soft drinks. Wala naman doon. So parang common sense, common sense. Uh, segregation, yung simple lang nga ba. Yung nabubulok, kaya minsan naiinis yung mga nagbabasura dahil ang baho-baho ng mga basura na nilalagay natin sa labas. Eh, eh kasi dapat yung mga yon nilalagay na lang natin sa paso pinapabulok na natin yung mga compostable. simpleng simple lang naman. Doon sa batas, may mga classification na ang dami-dami. Pero, 
simple lang pinapagawa natin. Yung nabubulok at di nabubulok. Yung malata at di malata. Simple na lang. Pero kung sinisipag ka, yung hindi nabubulok ay isesegregate mo ba doon sa hindi na pwedeng i-recycle o recyclable o kaya yung mga toxic o kaya mga residual waste at marami pang iba. Simple na lang sana sa bahay, yung, yung sinasabi nilang sa atin ng mga barangay, sige, sige, pero hindi natin nabubulok sa hindi nabubulok. Eh dahil sa katamaran natin, <laughs> hindi pa rin natin masesegregate. Kaya, yun nga. I think that's that's the biggest problem that we need to we need we need to ano we need to to face. But at the end of the day, uh, tanggalin din natin sa pag-iisip natin uh, sa long term no na ang objective talen na talaga natin ay zero waste no. Bawasan hanggang maging zero. At yung recycling, yung recycling kasi is just the last remedy. Kung hindi natin ma-reuse uh, at hindi natin ma-reduce Recycling is the last remedy. So don't think recycling as the number one solution, because the number one solution is to reduce. Kung hindi may wasan, reuse. Parang yung mga lolo at lola pag pumunta kayo sa cupboard nila o yung cabinet nila, makikita mo doon yung lahat ng mga yung mga uh, kung ano ba mga epekto sa mga nandoon, yung mga kinukuti-kuti mo. Naandiyan pa hanggang ngayon yung standard electric pan ng iyong lola ay hanggang ngayon ay nagwo-work pa. So yung obsolescence, pipili tayo sa mga binibili natin na hindi agad mau-obsolete. Pero siyempre yung mga korporasyon ay uh, nag-iisip pa rin na ay dapat may iPhone 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. May Samsung like this, Samsung like that, Samsung like this and something like that kaya parang uh, you know, ang purpose talaga ay para maging obsolete bibili ka kaagad so there's a need also to do uh, action or activism to have corporations be accountable din sa mga ginagawa nilang mga pag-obsolete obsolete na mga bagay How can we save the earth during this pandemic where new setup and regulations are implemented? Can we promote sustainable environment while preserving it at the same time? Thank you uh, for that question. So, uh, as to the first um, point, uh, kung, uh, what can we do now that we are setting up or trying to recover from COVID-19 um, in the long run or preparing for a post-COVID-19 world as we say na. The key to that is we need to look at solutions as a two birds, one stone solution. How, uh, what does that look like? Di ba parating sinasabi ng mga uh, governments na magkakaroon tayo ng economic stimulus. Meaning magbibigay sila ng pera, magpapahiram sila ng pera para after COVID, pag medyo lugi yung isang business, pag naghiram siya ng pera, masa start up yung kanyang business, masa start up yung ating economy. Now, how can we use this idea of economic stimulus in terms of pushing our environmental agenda forward? We can do this by asking the government, and this is where the advocating part comes in, this is where the part of the youth come in, this is where your part, part as youth leaders come in, is you ask the government na baka kung magpapahiram tayo ng money, para sa mga businesses pagkatapos ng COVID para makarecover sila or kahit ngayon habang um, nagkukup tayo sa COVID prioritize natin yung mga businesses na low carbon that way na encourage natin yung growth in that industry kasi pag nakikita ng mga tao na uy sinusuportahan ng government yung mga low carbon or environmentally friendly na companies eh di iisipin ng tao paano ba ako kikita dun na lang ako kasi may suporta ng government so that's one opportunity where we can use these kinds of um, conversations regarding COVID-19 and how do we move forward with all these new policies and ensuring that we are moving towards a greener world nga, so to say. As to the second um, question, kaya ba mag-environmental um, mag-conserve as well as develop? And I think that is a uh, false dichotomy no? um, when people talk about uh, environmental and development. And I think that's really where we get uh, in the environmental communications wrong. When you put it as a versus or this versus that conversation, you tend to alienate a side. Kasi pag hindi ka sa side ko, dun ka sa kabilang side. That's the problem if we say that environmental cannot or conservation cannot exist with development because in truth it can. 
And that is the dream. That is the aspiration. Kasi if we keep on just conserving, imagine sasabihin natin, oh, dahil ang konti na lang ng isda sa dagat, bawal na tayo lahat mang isda. Paano tayo kakain, di ba? Kung sasabihin natin, ay, ang pangit na mag-farming kasi nasisira yung mga forest natin, bawal na tayo lahat mag-farming. So again, how are we going to eat? So really, the aspiration is development and environmentalism through conservation to serve the sustainability of development meaning always remember that we are all environmentalists and we all uh, want to conserve ay hindi pala tayo lahat environmentalists sabi ni Rodney uh, ibang ano lang ibang view uh, we are all conserving ito na lang let's all remember that we are all trying to conserve the environment not always just for the environment but remember that in the end you always have to remember that the work that you do in conservation is to, supposed to help your fellow citizens your fellow people so always uh, balance that out na our is conservation sobra na naman ba na may nasasaktan na tao kasi really the dream is to be able to balance that we are all providing the needs of people and we are also conserving the environment enough that we will be able to serve the needs of the future generations. And before we end our today's program, we would like to invite Director Rafael Mahinay for his closing remarks. Thank you everyone for attending this meaningful event. And we hope that this meaningful discussion will live in your hearts and inspire you to start a small initiative that can save not only environment but also humanity. Thanks to our beloved speakers who shares their time and wonderful insights for us. Thanks to our teams who manage this, headed by Director Gisim and other directors who shares their hardships to make this webinar successful. God bless everyone, stay safe and stay home.